ahead and open with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll have a moment of silence. Thank you. Roll call. Pittman. Here. Mr. Scholey, Mr. Campbell. Here. Mr. Jones. Mr. Huff. Here. And we're going to skip D, John, correct? Yes. And we'll go right on to public session. Um, well, we're going to go right to G. WCDEFG minutes review and approval of the January 6, 2018 organizational meeting minutes and the January 6, 2018 regular meeting minutes of the Board of Education. Yeah, I am trying to rush today. <laughs> so moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Hump. Second by Mr. Campbell. Mr. Pittman. Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Yes. Presentation and recognition. Mrs. Fitz. Um, we have uh, just the two A and B here tonight. I think C is going to come uh, next time when Mr. Michelle is here because he kind of asked for that actually. I want to know. Sounds good. Uh, Mrs. Fisk, you want to kind of give us an update at the sure. elementary building? Uh, just a couple recent events. We had we celebrated World Read Aloud Day on February 1st. Um, it was information that we received an email on that all across the world people were celebrating by doing read alouds on this particular date. Um, we had a couple guest readers. I read, Mr. Baker read. Um, we had Julie Bursick, who's the uh, ESC consultant that's been giving us a lot of media lately, came out and read. So during the K1 and 2 lunch and recess times, we did small read aloud um, to our classes and then over the announcements we read to the entire school. Uh, we recently had the fifth and sixth grade interactive band concert or band practice. It was the second year for that. Um, very well attended. Um, it's it's really and I love the parents. I love them all, but those that have a parent and fifth, a child in fifth and then the child in sixth, because if you don't stay for both to hear the change, the progression the kids make from fifth to sixth, from hot cross buns to the others, it's quite. <laughs> To hear hot cross buns, we all love, right? Recorder days. Um, but they did a fantastic job. Uh, a couple upcoming events. We have our jump rope for hard kickoff. will be on March 2nd. So we'll be having the assembly to kick that off. And then you'll see information coming home with the children for sponsorships. Our kindergarten registration. We have a busy March 7th, 8th, and 9th are good days to be in our area. Uh, we have kindergarten registration the 7th, 8th, and 9th. <coughs> our literacy night for K3 is March 7th. Um, our Camp Fitch for 5th grade is March 7th through 9th. We have our book fair going on at that time. So it's a lot of things jam-packed into those three days in the building. Um, our PTA meeting this past week, one of the major things discussed, uh, and I was hoping Bill was kind of be here because it's kind of his thing that he initiated. Um, over spring break, our custodial staff will be uh, doing new door handles. PTA has purchased our current door handles. When you use your key to get in, you have to like turn it left, turn it right, and it, like it's very, every time you put it in, you're, you're struggling. Did I lock it? Did I leave it unlocked? So it was one of the things they looked at, and now it's more, um, the way he had explained it was it's more like a hotel door. Like when you put it, once it's locked, it's locked, but you can unlock it from the inside as well. Um, but just for, for quickness also that you know if your door's not locked you can quickly lock it but you can also get in quickly and more efficiently and know that your door's locked behind you. So those will be um, they can retrofit like 10 of the doors and just 18 will be completely new door handles. Um, so that will be happening over spring break. That's great. I thought it was wonderful I did go to band night. Um, and I was surprised at how many students there were. I'm wondering how we can keep them. How can we keep them? Yeah. Because uh, there probably is not very many sixth graders or fifth graders that are currently not participating in band. Mm -hmm. So what's the drop off? I, I, I don't know that answer. Yeah, I don't either. And I yeah. wish that there was a way that we could 
Um, they figured that out. Are they? Ask the kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it, they have made significant changes. But then I all spoke about it before that when we um, get to high school and junior high, they just you know it all get involved in other things. And, I mean, because it's not even a personnel thing. Because fifth grade is Miss Perzuti, fifth and sixth is a tag team of Mr. Kittle and Miss Perzuti. So it's not even like a you could completely say a change of instructor or something. Um, I don't know. And uh, there's other things happening at those same times, but. They do more of a rotation. At the seventh grade level, yeah. the drop off is in the When you begin giving them some choices, um, sometimes it isn't the most popular thing to do. And then sometimes it becomes a peer. Am I, am I right that in fifth and sixth grade, it's almost kind of incentivized because it's filling a free time that they otherwise wouldn't have anything to do. But in junior high, it's taking the place of other curriculum. Like they have an option for a study hall or an elective. At the eighth grade level. Okay. Yes. So it could be options. More yeah, options they available have a study too. Hall. In sixth grade, they really don't have an option. They have a study hall. There are options yeah, in the downtime. The same option. So it, yeah. it's a little, it's almost incentivized there, which is not a bad thing. Yeah. But when they get older, it's not that it's not incentivized by that, and it's it's in competition with other curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. Especially at the high school. Yeah, okay. it definitely becomes that nice. Because they really do a nice job. I would love to see them stay. Thank you, Mrs. Fisk. Mr. B. Okay, I have a couple things. Um, there's, there's a lot going on in our building also. Um, obviously, with testing coming up, that's one of the big things that we're preparing for. Our juniors, for the last five weeks, have been taking ACT prep classes uh, every Wednesday. Um, those just ended yesterday due to the snow day, so we had to, we had to reschedule one. Um, Mr. Vichikio comes in and, and actually sits and works with our juniors for about two and a half hours on just strategies and um, I'm hoping that we can continue to do that. It is a little bit of a cost, but we did see uh, a, a lot of uh, benefit in it last year with some of the kids. It was, I can't say all the kids benefit from it, but there were some that did benefit from it and um, We'll see what happens this year. You know, it's kind of a year-to-year -year deal. And again, the state of Ohio does require us to give our juniors the ACT test, and they are paying for it this year. Um, the state of Ohio will never know when they're going to change that, but hopefully they'll continue to pay for it um, if they're requiring it. So at this point, that's what we're leading up to. That will be on February 27th for students to take that test. And then obviously we have the, the state testing that's coming up, and um, Mr. Baker has the dates on those. And, um, obviously that's something that the staff is working very hard for us. I do have two other things that I just wanted to bring up or mention to you guys. Um, we had two of our teachers that worked together last week on a lesson that they thought um, they had a lot, of com lot in common. Uh, Mrs. Mandalora and Mrs. Willock actually worked together on a lesson that dealt with the Italian Renaissance. And Mr. Mandalora taught the art aspect of it, and Mrs. Willock taught the history aspect of it. Actually switching classrooms um, in order to do that. Um, they did a few things. Um, this is from Mrs. Mandalora. They taught about Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Inventions of the Renaissance, uh, Sistine Chapel by interacting through a virtual tour, allowing the students to explore all the amazing murals and the process in which Michelangelo used to paint the ceiling by laying on his back. They had the kids actually tape something under the desk and they were drawing a picture. Um, it's kind of funny because today I went to the printer and there was a picture of these three girls on their backs under a table. And I didn't know what it was. <laughs> Who's printing this? Um, and then I got this that actually described what it was. So um, at this point, the seventh graders are also going to create their own Leonardo da Vinci sketchbook by using their STEM skills to create an invention like da Vinci. So this is something hopefully that will continue in the future and um, something that our, our staff really enjoys. We've done some things in the past with the elementary school. I know Barnes has gone down to the elementary school. Uh, I believe we can get the staff to work together like that. It's definitely 
Um, the second thing that I have, I'm going to just give you guys a copy. Mrs. Willock also attended the training this week that hopefully next year we will able be able to implement for our entire staff. And the training itself was fully paid for um, and it was sponsored by Jostens. Um, and I'm just going to read what Mrs. Willock sent me. It says she had the opportunity to attend a professional development on character leadership that was provided by the Congressional Medal of Honor Foundation and was held at Kent State. During the uh, professional development, the presenters were current classroom teachers who actually used the resource in their classrooms. The lessons they worked on throughout the day dealt with core values of service, courage, integrity, sacrifice, commitment, citizenship, and patriotism. It was about teaching children life lessons they need beyond the classroom. And in addition to working through the lessons, they had the honor to meet and listen to a Medal of Honor recipient, Doc Ballard, from the Vietnam War. Um, she says it was amazing to hear his story and how the teachers used this and, and the collaboration that went along with it. And as you see there, they are offering this to us as a, as a free training session, and it is something we are going to look, look into for next year. Um, but I thought it was a great opportunity for one of our teachers just to get some lessons that dealt with some things beyond what you typically see in a textbook um, with some of that information. I am going to, with your permission, I'm going to send you guys a couple things in your emails. Um, I will send you some pictures that Miss Amanda Laura provided me of the students working on the Renaissance, and then I'm going to provide you a video that goes along with this so that you guys can just see a little bit um, as to what, it, what it's all about. I don't want to do it in advance because you wouldn't have had any idea why I was <laughs> sending you that stuff. So, um. Is this similar to something that may have been done like at the elementary where you do like a character trait of the month? Is it something along I those lines? I don't 100% know because um, I really haven't had a chance to sit down with Mrs. Warlock yet and, and discuss it. Um, but I'm guessing that a lot, most of the lessons probably dealt with something in that, in that yeah. realm. So. They actually even paid for the sub for her to go. So. That's very nice. Wonderful. Good, thank you. Um, Officer Sadowski is here, so I don't know if you wanted to chime in. Mrs. Fisk was talking about the doorknobs. You know, oh, the handle that they're going to leave or the handles, yeah, yep. that over spring break. So you kind of want to touch base real quick on that? Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, we, um, the past four years that I've been here, uh, the door handles have been kind of an issue. Um, with our teaching staff. Um, the handles that are over there now, you have to put the key in, unlock them, open the door, re put the, take the key out, put the key back in, relock the door, walk in, shut the door, and remove the key. So they're, they're very, very problematic with the teachers remembering to keep them locked throughout the school day. Um, statistics have shown that uh, no active school shooter has ever penetrated a door. So. A locked door is the best defense that we have for any type of active school shooter. Um, the teachers brought this to my attention. Um, I brought it to Mrs. Fisk's attention, and um, we thought it would be a great project for a PTA. Um, we presented it to the PTA, and uh, they loved it. Um, and we were able to get um, what they call an apartment. Door. So if anybody ever had an apartment, I said hotel. Sorry. Hotel. Well, same thing. Hotel apartment. Uh, if you ever had an apartment, you remember back in the day, you used to just stick the key in and you would turn the key and you walk right in. Okay. All meanwhile, when you remove the key, the door stays locked. So you pull the key out, the door would shut behind you, the door would remain locked. So there's no more filling around with the key, having to turn it two, three, sometimes four times, and it also takes away that memory factor. Um, the door's already locked, so we don't have to worry about it. But the only so, memory factor is to take the key with you. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, don't. Yeah. Just don't take the key with you. Don't, don't. So, um, uh, we ended up getting a, a very uh, good quote um, from A&M Door, from Bart McGee, uh, who was able to work with the school and our PTA. Um, substantially, I must say. Uh, I mean, he, he came down a lot on price. So, if you guys see Bart out and around, please thank him. Um, we got the quote and the PTA last night, Kim, approved it Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And um, so we'll be getting those installed in uh, in the um, springtime. Spring yeah. Uh, so. Sounds great.
Anything else you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, actually I do. So, so do I have my notebook? No. <laughs> no. Um, so we'll just skip to my part, is that alright? That sounds yeah. great. So, so I am going to go down to uh, the next page and I will bring up uh, T. But I'll bring up Men of Honor while you're here. Oh, sure. Um, <clears throat> the Men of Honor program uh, finally kicked off and uh, for the first year. And um, I'll tell you what, we've uh, really had <coughs> a lot of compliments. Um, I know a few of us in this room got emails, phone calls about the positive results that they're seeing in the nine kids that are participating in the Men of Honor program. And um, um, I just received another one yesterday uh, from one student's mom in particular, um, just raving about his attitude and um, at home. And um, school works coming around, but his attitude has uh, improved significantly. Uh, we just recently took, uh, well, with Mr. Vega's idea, actually, uh, one of our lessons was about image and uh, the image a man should portray in today's society. Um, kind of, uh, you know, you look good, feel good type of, of mantra. And uh, we, I was able to, with Dave's permission, go out to New Style Salon and uh, spoke to Shauna Graham. And uh, we made a field trip out of it, and we took the boys up there, and she donated haircuts to our boys um, to help with our cause about that image and the image of man should portray. Um, so that was very successful, and uh, you know we did a little PR right up on it. Um, I, I don't know if you have it with you. I can go get it if you'd like to see it. I don't think. I don't think it's right back. That's not a problem. But it's a 10 week program and uh, we're on week five right now. So next week uh, we meet every Tuesday for approximately uh, 45 minutes or so. And uh, you know we talk about loyalty, honesty, integrity, um, all around leadership skills that men should have in today's society. Um, all the way down to how a man should treat a woman. Uh, how a man should portray himself through law enforcement, through the eyes of law enforcement, how they should react with law enforcement, how they should react with teachers, uh, people of authority figures. And not only are we teaching them these, boy, th these boys uh, these, these lessons, but they're expected and they were picked due to their, how should I say this, um, how well they're going to teach their peers. So not only are we just teaching them, but they're expected to go out inside the Jackson Milton community and teach other boys th these lessons and um, kind of raise a community awareness about it. And um, so far, so good. I've had nothing but positive, positive, positive reports. I got to say, the kids just loved it too. They were very, so polite there, and uh, we actually took them down. I took some of my car, and uh, Bill and Dave took some down. And, uh, they didn't. Uh, they definitely. Uh, some of them changed their hairstyle drastically. I mean, some not seeing some eyes before we went. Uh, pretty short hair. Uh, it's fun. The looks on their faces, especially one boy in particular, um, I mean, it just, it literally made his day, uh, made his week. You just saw a complete change, and you would never think that a haircut would do that, but it does. It does. It changes those boys, uh, uh, just the way they think about themselves, how they hold themselves, how they carry themselves uh, throughout the school, and you know what? Um, it, it, it really shows. I even had teachers email me about it. I mean, it's it was crazy how positive a result that that that, that caused. So. That's good. She had four people there cutting hair. So mm -hmm. We were in and out, but uh, yeah, it was nice that they donated their time to the kids. Thanks for setting that up. Not a problem. Nice. Okay. Uh, I would go back to A policies. You have uh, uh, quite a bit in your book to look over. Uh, we're not voting on any of them tonight, so you have them to look over for next month. And some of them, I think there's only a couple that will make uh, like pick some of the choices from it to go from there. But most of them are. Uh, uh, most of them are mandatory, actually. So. Reading Grant, Mahoney County uh, Educational Service Center is working on a K-12 grant. Uh, I want to say special thanks to Mr. Vega and Mrs. Fisk. Uh, it's a, it's a $34 million grant for Ohio, $35 million grant for Ohio from the federal uh, money that they're applying for it, it has to be an ESC that's applying for it, so like we couldn't apply for it individually, but there are 16 schools involved in it with the ESC, um, and you would think you'd get a little bit of time to, to work on it, but uh, especially when you're talking about something of that kind of that magnitude of money. And, uh, so uh, everything had to be kind of 
done in a couple weeks. So I know that those two have put in a lot of time on the weekend, uh, getting all the information they needed. Uh, Mr. Toro, I think, is the one from the middle school that's been working on it. And you had Mr. Reyes. Mr. Reyes and Mrs. Basil helping. Mrs. Basil helping. I had Mr. Fonderlin, Mrs. Zinger, uh, Ms. McMurray, and Mr. Fugel. So, um, not only was it before school or after school, but it was in two days at the county office uh, that they were helping, and uh, we'll see if we get it. It's uh, all literature based uh, for in service, basically, for K 12. So, um, and it's kind of broken up. Uh, like it's K 2, and then 3, 4, 5, that, that's two separate, and then 6, 8, and then 9, 12. Is that correct how they're doing the PD? So. Uh, we'll see, but uh, again, it was kind of out there, and uh, we kind of jumped on it. So there's 16 of us that uh, that are in the ESC on board with it. So we'll see so what happens with it. All 16? Would uh, the money would go? Like they all did the work the same as? It's, well, yeah, it's all individual. It it's all started as place. 24 last Friday, and when we met last Friday, it went to 16 by this week. It ended up 67 pages, is what our grant. And, wow. and the, the way the process works is that we all had to do a, a literacy plan and submit it to the county. The county then took all of those, combined it into one, and then they submitted the grant. Oh, okay. So, in order, basically, there wasn't a district really in our area that would ever have gotten this grant by itself. Yeah. Youngstown went on its own. And, and, and I think Warren, Warren went on their own. Uh, just yeah. right. size facilities, everything else. Uh, uh, they're awarding 30 grants from their 35 million. When will we hear? It's supposed to know by April. Yeah. Oh, that's fast. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it which is it like per district? Well, it's not a per district. Yeah, what would happen is the ESC would be awarded the grant and they would <coughs> set up the resources, PD, oh, okay. um, supplements, everything, to Ooh. only the, the districts that apply. Okay. And your individual school's grant, our, like our proposal, has to score at least a 60% when it goes through the grant um, rubric. And the so, ESC can only get, the maximum will be 1.2 million over three years. Yeah, over okay. three years. Well, that's so the wonderful. ESC will delegate Yes, 16. they'll supply, like they, we've had to submit numbers of staff, um, certifications yeah. of staff, what the current resources we have. So looking at level book, um, PD, um, we finished, we submitted it at what time today? 1.34 or something, it was like, yes! Um, well, we're pulling for you. Let us know. Yeah, well, our staff was fantastic. It's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, staff. Thank you, guys. Thank you, your staff. Um, facilities is kind of like a, it's going to be very broad topic. So um, we have been checking into uh, stadium lights is basically what I'm trying to get out of facilities. But uh, the uh, we were waiting for a quote to come back, which uh, that's kind of a no go. The one we we're waiting on. Them. Yes. Yeah. It's a, uh, okay. Well, we ended up getting. Remember, last meeting was like five hundred thousand dollars, roughly, for the lights at the high school, you know, stadium lights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were all going to have heart attacks yeah. because we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> anyway, um, the one the one uh, engineer we we uh, got a hold of went back and revamped his numbers. He looked at the wiring up there. The wiring is all all good. The um, thing that blew up. Transformers. Transformers were good. It wouldn't be that one. Was that on the grant? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, they they came back and he said we could put all the new the poles up, the four new poles in LED for around two fifty. What? Mm -hmm. Two fifty. New poles. New poles. It wouldn't be 80 foot, it would be 70 foot, but he said yeah. it's only 80 70 foot. That includes the cost of the foundation for those holes? He said, he said $250,000. Well, what happened to our idea of the, <coughs> the bar? I think he's getting I'm get that. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, but he also did say that we could retrofit lights on his existing poles up there, like 125 LEDs, or we could use a traditional light, like kind of like what's up there now for about 75000 Okay. And Dave did a lot of work in this, and the heat down, this other uh, booth electric came back, and they were like, it's just rough. These are all his estimates, about 223000 so we got two comparable estimates. 
right. with new polls about the same price. So do we need new polls, John? Well, that's what we have to have discussions. Is there anything about for twenty five hundred? But are you going to the one row though? That's what she was asking. Oh, there's, there's a third option now. I mean, they, um, he's meeting with uh, CLR, CLR Electric about just adding us like a, another row of lights, existing lights up there on the bottom to each pole. Okay. And um, and clean them. I guess something happened with the window. The heat causes the, the lenses to get like brown. I mean, if you ever notice that lighting up there, it is brown. It's got a brown tint to it. And it's because of the, the heat and the lights. Uh, so it's like your car. Your you get your car headlamp. Your headlamp. Yeah. So we're going to get a price on just adding another light to it and cleaning them up. It's probably going to be cheaper. Uh, right. Off to go, but yeah. again, the board's going to have to discuss whether tonight or have another meeting sometime. And Mitch is here about who yeah. knows one of the we actually need price on. Yeah, we need prices. The other one, the third option. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the one that I would think real quick we want to lean toward, but. Because we have no reason well, to believe. Well, the first time they went out, the issue was the wire. Well, the transformer was the issue, but we have no reason to believe that the new transformer is going to go out. The other one was like what, 40 years old, right? If the transformer right. goes out, that's still got nothing to do with the light. Correct. Correct. Well, they won't work if the transformer goes out. Okay, so if you spend 250 thousand dollars and put brand new lights up, and the transformer goes out, I don't care if you got. True. New lights or new lights. Right. Don't matter. All the issues we left, the old lights, lights and made lights, right. pulling right. the amps out of there because of the because of the evolved. Because you are you will be way more energy efficient by putting the LEDs up. Mm -hmm. We seven percent more efficient. Yeah, but you're, it's going to take really? you 50 years to pay for it because you only have them on five nights. I mean, exactly. let's say five nights a year. A year. Exactly. Exactly. Thirty burning hours. I mean, I just put all new LEDs in our warehouses all across. All across the state of Ohio, but and I got grants for it. I mean, I got um, part of the power, power mm -hmm. We got rebates on oh, yeah. it because because we were going to LED. But our lights are on, you know, eight hours. Yeah. yeah, that's why I said it's. Uh, I would think the last choice that we're waiting for is probably the one we're going to look at the most. But again, we need that last price because we can just have even one row. Get those lights clean that are there. And put one more row on each pole. And the additional row would be LED, right? No. I don't, I don't think it would work. It would be the same as the existing light. Yeah, so I don't think you want one row of LEDs with yeah. okay. the other ones. But in the, like those, uh, we're talking about those transformers. You know, they went. The other one went probably what four or five years ago when it, on, yeah. this, on the home side. Then the other one went last year, but they lasted 40 years. So now we have two fairly new, right. two new transformers. So you would hope that if they last 40 years. And for five football games, ten. Quarter of a million dollars. No, that's what we're saying. We don't have ten home games. That's not the problem. We don't. We have five home football games a year. Six max, sometimes four. So for five games, why would we spend that much money? We don't have that kind of money. I agree. That's what we need to get the price for cleaning them up and adding a row of lights to go from there. I'd rather play on Saturday. If it's going to cost that much. I don't know. That's what we got to check. I don't know how one row would work with the other ones. That's how we have to look up. But I mean, we're going to have to look at that. Really bright. Too much money. They're way bright. As soon as you as soon as you screw the new bulbs in when you replace them, they start they start losing their. It might look money. Lumens right away. But that's I mean the field's dark. That's a bigger problem than the lights going out all the time. It's the dark field. Yeah. There's only four lights. They're not that high. You know so. We're not going to completely solve the problem by adding lower lights because the poles are still the same height. That's not changing. You still only have four poles. Right? But the new poles are talking about would be ten feet lower. Really? Ten feet lower. Yeah. That's putting it lower. You said that's ten feet. feet. Oh, how tall is it? Eight feet. That's why we got to get that. That's why we have to have the special lift, and it costs so much more money. Yeah, he said. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, he said seventy foot poles. Yeah. So I mean, if we have to have a special beam, we will. But. Uh, I think what we're looking at isn't like it's going to take months to get something in. I think, you know? Right. Well, if we could just go back to how this all this conversation started before, like even going to the board, is they wanted the board, the prior board decided that's where the field's going to be. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if the, this is your, your your call, but are we still? I'm not on that page. Well, yeah, that's I, I think I'm the one. If I'm the only one, it's we were we were going to start with the lights, right? We we're going to start with the lights, get the lights going. Do it the right way. That's where all this conversation started. 
I didn't go to school here, so I don't. I mean, if you guys, if you guys want to just keep it there, it's fine with me. But well, I think it's I a bigger picture, Tom. I've got it's a lot not of about uh, going to school here. It's a bigger picture. We're we're really well, I mean, three you have towns. Roots here. You have roots here. We're North Jackson. We're Lake Milton, and we're Craig Beach. Down there, and I graduated from here. Yeah. So, yeah. I, mean, I think. I mean, yeah, I think it's you're right. Like Every decision we make regarding that field and money has. We have to know if that field's going to be there in ten years. And I don't think it makes any sense for that field to be there in 10 years, personally. Yeah, I think we're going to need Mitch. So well, we need a vision on where we want to go. Yeah, uh, right. we have to establish And that we don't vision. really have one, so that's a problem. that vision before we determine any money we're going to spend, because if we're still going to be at that field in 10 years, then now's the time to make an investment in it. Right. If we're not going to be, we need to have some sort of time frame of what we anticipate with that field. It's almost how you do forecast. We almost need to write something today. Well, it's bigger than just the field. It's facilities. No, it's it's saying, the whole it's thing. Yeah. It's We've talked about possible um, gyms and, and things of that nature. So, I mean, it's a big mean, picture. I mean, I know you want the vision and everything, but it's still all talking of money. And when yeah. you start talking about moving field here, yeah, you're talking, like you're talking about millage. You're talking septic. You're talking about right. lines. You're sure. talking it's construction bill. You're talking buildings for it's seven figures. It's seven right. figures. Right. You think, but if you think that field is going to be there for another ten or twelve years, if that's your thought process, then you shouldn't just put a bandaid on a problem. You should fix it more like the hundred twenty-five thousand dollar range. Fix it for the next twelve years. Otherwise, six years from now, we're going to be sitting here having the same conversation and having just burned fifty thousand dollars on a bandaid. You're probably going to have a special meeting to sit down just like that would be the whole conversation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But you got to think about it in the meantime. Well, again, this, this uh, fellow Jim that stated that we could, you know, these are just rough figures. One, 125000 you could put the LED lights out there on this existing page that you just mentioned. Or you can get Eric on a lift and clean them. <laughs> Well, I just think yeah. he's just, I, I think it's only fair to him because he's, I think he's one of the ones strong that would yeah. rather see it stay there. So I think it's only fair to him. Well, I don't think we can make any decision today. When um, are we expecting the next quote to be back? Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'll call Tuesday, but it's legal on Tuesday. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you need to you guys. Yeah, maybe we can just find a time where it's good for everyone and decide what we do want to do. I think that lands worth more than we're thinking. And then, here's up the house. Well, you can sell it right on that. I mean, you use that later. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a lot of things to think about. Okay. Uh, I have educator of the year here and volunteer of the year. So we typically, um, you know, mention that the last week of school on graduation night. So um, I know at one point we talked about doing it differently. I don't know if uh, we're going to get names off principals in Florida View. I don't know if you want me to see if, like, the, uh, if Jamie A wants to get involved and help. I don't know how you want me. Does it matter? You guys? Is there a policy on this? No. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about. Yeah. I really. I just don't. My opinion. Yeah. I. The, first, the answer is yes. I'd rather have their opinion. But then, <laughs> why do I even vote on it? What do I know? I mean, all I know is a name. Nine times out of ten. I really enjoy when we have one in each building. I think it's very um, commendable, and it makes us feel like a whole. Um, but that's just my opinion, and I definitely think we need the input of our administrators and John and Kirk because they're here every day with our people. So, I mean, you want to just keep it like we can get nominations from principals and talk about it in the group? Uh, I'm with that, yeah. Okay. I, I thought we talked about having the criteria yes, put no. together for it so yeah. that when they say, here's my suggestion, and they give me the four names in the row, I can say, okay, well, now I understand why they were number one. No, we break. Is that just saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying you yeah. don't put thought into it. No, no. I'm just saying so that I can understand. Yeah, what right. Why? You don't know. You don't work with them. You don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not here. You like, want to know. Like, like Tom said, he's not here every day. He doesn't mm -hmm. know if they're. I guess uh, that's why I didn't know even for their protection, if we, if we need to have something 
Don't you, do you guys not do bios? In writing that we're trying to... On the teacher, like when you submit them, you don't do bios? Read them on. Um, um, no, just... Once we we've selected the, the winners, yes. So, so, the, so when you guys go and pick a teacher or whatever, there's no like bio and then you can give to them going, okay, this is why I would think this is their quick bio, just a donation form. Yeah, just a, a yeah. quick bio, and then you can glance at it because you don't really know that teacher or something going, oh, this is what this teacher has done. This is what they've done for the year or whatnot to make them even think that they were an option. And it's just like a couple paragraphs or whatever. I mean, some people have done a huge, so it's like two pages. That's kind of what you were asking for, yeah, criteria. And then the volunteer will usually get off of the principals and the uh, athletic director and stuff. Sounds good. Okay. You guys okay with that? Uh, Easter break is March 30th to April 9th. Um, we did talk about searches before, but it was, again, uh, previously, I think, being Mr. Campbell being on and stuff. So we've always talked about, you know, we've had the dog searches come in. Uh, in the past, we've searched. Uh, not actually searched, but had the dog go through the parking lot and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I think last time we talked about it, we agreed that that's okay to do. Mm -hmm. I'm still on board with that. Anybody not on board with that? Okay. Uh, National Honor Society Father-Daughter uh, Dinner Dance is the 23rd at 6 o'clock. Um, I think they were up to 180 people. Oh, right. oh, oh, good for that. That's amazing. That's craziness. Well, it's here now, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the cafeteria, and we're, we're searching for tables right but, now. Uh, it's, I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that that's is unbelievable. Wow. But, uh, and then uh, Mrs. Ray is... Yeah. They do have a great time that night, though. It's nice. It's, it's, very yeah, it's, the, largest, it's the largest number they've ever had. Yeah. Uh, varsity Girls Basketball Sectional Tournament uh, starts the 24th for our girls. They play at home uh, starting at 1 o'clock, and we're not sure who they play yet. So they'll play the winner of the game. Play the I actually gave you a bracket. Uh, <coughs> oh, you gave us the bracket. I did give you a boys and uh, girls bracket there to look at, so you can see who's like, in our tournament. Our mm. uh, Varsity Wrestling Sectional Tournament starts February 24th, the same day. They uh, they did turn that into a one-day event. I don't know if you're kind of familiar with wrestling. It used to be a Friday afternoon and all-day Saturday. Now it's just all-day Saturday. Uh, so that starts at 10 o'clock at Rootstown. Uh, and then the regionals are the following weekend up at Garfield Heights. And then the top four from Rootstown to the to Garfield. The, uh, where I got the boys out, I got them later because of the date, I guess. So NHS induction ceremony is March 6th at 6 o'clock here in the cafeteria. High school winter sports award assembly is on the 13th at 6.30. Then the boys play. Uh, the boys open up tournament play at Springfield Local against Springfield on the 27th at 7 o'clock. Uh, Lucas Sokol uh, advanced to the Pee Wee State Wrestling Tournament at Akron Firestone. I believe that's this weekend. Does that sound right? I think it is. On his way back, he had lost his first, so he made it all the way back through the Concies to move on. Yeah. So he's tough. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure, but I thought it was this weekend, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, Michalina Terranova became our all-time leading scorer. Um, so she, uh, on uh, the 12th, uh, <coughs> congratulations to her. The high school cheerleaders advanced to state competition uh, March 3rd in uh, Columbus, Westerville, Ohio. So uh, they're down there for practice as well, actually. Eighth grade boys and eighth grade girls basketball teams finished third. Uh, so they both won the runner-up game. Uh, the JM Athletic website uh, reached a milestone. It hit uh, 200,000 hits in a five-month period. And I did have somewhere else. If they were 23rd for the month of December, uh, let me see here. They were 23rd for the month of December in hits out of 2,300 schools. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of hits, actually. Congratulations. And uh, Mr. Hope put that together for us. Uh, Blue Jay Elf. Uh, no, I forgot. Uh, 
and everything that was purchased in the too. So, um, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. Like 6,700, I think it was, actually. So I think, like I said, 69 students uh, got some help from the donations. Nice. So that's awesome. Uh, the, or we did mental water, the Blue Jay 5K, uh, Mr. Rattuno and I met with Abby Fishtorn, who's going to head up the 5K this year. I believe it's uh, May 20th. And she is off and running with it. She is going to do a couple different things differently. She's going to have like a competitive type thing, like an Ironman type competition. And then a regular competition starting time for people that want to take their time and jog and walk it. Uh, but she's talking about like uh, digging a mud hole where you got to go and digging a thing where you got to climb over. and. Uh, a mountain. Um, <laughs> yeah, not a mountain. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah, you don't it's have like to. It's like one of those warrior competitions. So with a warped wall, I mean, and she's warped already wall. sent things home, which I think is yeah. wonderful. Yeah, she's she, running it through PTA. It's um, wonderful. So everything runs through PTA. They have insurance, uh, but she's already contacting businesses and lining up donations. Good for her. And, uh, she has Pepsi's coming. Uh, the Marines are setting up a tent. They're trying to coordinate with the Navy and the Air Force as well. They're going to do like their pull-up contest. Mm -hmm. um, she has litter truck and trailer. Has like bounce houses. Pepsi still needs water. Um, she's trying to get porta johns donated right now. So if anyone. Has <laughs> Um, that um, would be my husband. Oh, really? Thank and you. I didn't even know that. I swear to God, I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be the um, King Brothers. Uh, okay. Um, their Where's son the owns a Porter Johns company. Okay, I might be. So that would be that right there. Talking to. But yeah, I mean, she was just a PTA talking about all the donations. Nice. Like, and she's doing a, like a race for younger kids, mm -hmm. like maybe once around the track or something. She's talking about it. And then, uh, like I said, the 5K, and then the 5K. Uh, it's just going to be a fun zone for kids too, yeah. just free for parents to bring yeah. kids out with clowns from the Shriners. I think she'll do a great job. She's very organized. She's yeah. a very nice lady. And she's into it, so yeah. good. And, uh, Those if you don't know, Abby Fishtorn, she has, um, Otis is in kindergarten, at, um, Princess is in first grade. She is the mother. She works at YSU, coordinated mm -hmm. all these supplies to be donated for every kindergartner and first grader this year. Yes. Okay. So when she so bites on an idea, it's, yeah, she is. It's Midas. You'd like her, yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. yeah. And I saw there was an incentive. The first 200 people that sign up get a a swag a bag. bag. Oh, yeah, they have cute. swag yeah. bags. Uh, there's going to be a photographer yeah. taking picture. Yeah, she's very nice. She's great, and then uh, <coughs> Mrs. Mendelor all the contacts that she originally had, but they kind of already went. Threw down and passed it and doing other stuff. So uh, she's on it, that's for sure. But, I mean, her enthusiasm at the meeting was unbelievable. Uh, so that's the 5K. Uh, I have a <coughs> agenda for the or draft in there for the school calendar. We'll probably vote on it next month. I do have to meet with uh, JMEA. They're getting the committee together to go over some things. The only thing in there is uh, waiver day, like PD days. So we might have to approve a calendar and then approve another one before school's out if obviously if they get that grant then we're going to have to coincide some PD dates with them. But uh, um, again we're on minutes not actually days even though contractually we did days with the teachers like we were. But, uh, Are we on minutes? We're on minutes. So then uh, we'll be okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I thought we were on days. No, we had to go to minutes last contract even though in the contract, we kept it the same for days. We kept it the okay. same for makeup. That's good because <coughs> our hours are long. Our elementary yeah. students yeah. are significantly yeah. longer than other students yes. around, so that'll be helpful for us. Yeah, when the talk was going to minutes, we actually calculated it out and we could miss that. We could actually not have 19 days of school. Right, and we'll be okay. Good, I was concerned about that. But we are making them up this year. We have the many days. For yeah, it's days. in there even next year, we would make them up after five. So we're going to make them up even though we don't have to. Yeah. 
Well, at least the union contract said we had to make the days up. We can always waive private student day for the teachers with the new PD with yeah. like the last day of school. Like we're at five right now, so anything after this we can make up. The teachers would have to make them up. But the kids don't. We could we'll probably get away from the That's very interesting to me. But that would give us some like a PD, something to do at the end of the year too. We can start to check out the Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Uh, after school care, you know, I don't uh, just wanted to throw it on there today because it's probably a possibility that we're just going to cancel it. We're getting, we're just losing money. Really? Not very many kids? Two kids, some oh, days, really? one, one day, four one day. It's just not Oh, it's a day by day thing? Yeah. Yeah, they don't have to come every day. And uh, like the other day, we have two kids, so we're losing. And you're faithfully today. announcing it, sending information out. And parents that were inquiring yeah. about it aren't sending their kids. Yeah. So we don't know if it's because we started later that they've already made arrangements. But I mean, I had parents that called every day that, hey, are you going to do this? And we have it and they're not coming. So, in the, you know, when we did that, we weren't, we didn't want to make money, but we surely didn't want to lose money. Right. So, you know, it's not, it's hard to justify doing that when we're deficit spending. Mm -hmm. so, it's just not. Uh, well, and you were clear with that. Yeah. It, it was clear. I, I mean, that, yeah. no, I got. To, I actually got. I, I made sure I had the attendance here. This actually right. And that's not the case with the before school care, oh, correct? No. Like you're getting a lot more students for the before. And I mean, it's only five dollars as opposed to free. So I don't even think it's the fiscal thing. You know. Mm -hmm. I think you're on to something when it started. You know, like if it maybe started at the beginning of the year, but that'd be going. That's, you know, that's my only guess. More than yeah, that's, uh, but I mean. When you look at uh, were we off here until 5:30? Yeah. On yeah. the eighth, we only had two kids. On the sixth, we had three. I mean, yeah, we just can't do that. That's just not good decision making. I mean, yeah. For, I mean, uh, daycare place usually only until six anyway. So. And we have uh, one, two. We have like five kids that actually their parents signed them up and have never stayed yet one time. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but they signed them up. I, we can't hold it just for like in case one day. Mm -hmm. Every two weeks, somebody wants to go do something. So like, tomorrow morning, you don't know who's staying. No, in the morning's different. Morning, no, no, I'm talking awesome. like tomorrow yeah. morning though. At um, 8, 8 a.m., you won't know who's going to be there after school. They not send a note that day. That day. Yeah. The yeah. day of. Yes, that's how and they. Sometimes did they don't, and then a, you know, we had a kindergartner. I'm supposed to stay today, and I'm holding buses, and we're calling. Like, no, oh. we don't have enough. Hold on, know. you know. It's just not, you know, like I said, uh, yeah, that's a lot of cool things. <laughs> the whole thing was not to make money, but not to lose yeah. money. Right, yeah, we were told. And, and to be a convenience for our parents. I mean, we want to try and make it that they can do what they need to do, but, yeah, it's... I guess they're doing okay. But also, they're picking their kids up, a lot of them, at 2.30 over here, so it's easier to wait in the afternoon. If they're making arrangements to be here at 2.30 to pick up their 7th graders, then, you know, it's easy to hang out till 3, 10, or 15. Yeah, I wish... I need that work schedule myself. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, again, we just can't do it like. No, I know. I mean, I'm a convenience too. thing when someone wants it once every two. No, months. I know. I thought it was more like, yeah, you know, like I said, read that details. Uh, but I mean, if if we're going to cancel, I was going to be with the principals next week. We would, you know, we'd do a two week notice or something. So yeah. in case they do that, but I mean, just so you know, in case you hear why we were canceling. So. Uh, table tennis. Just so you know, I don't know if you remember. I don't even know if you're on here. So uh, the kids approached Mr. Vega and I about just doing table tennis once a week after school in the winter months. So I donated my table, and actually it's going really well. Kids love it. Um, they do a tournament, they draw, and they play, and then the winner plays Mr. Uh, um, Josh Smith. Um, so I think one kid beat him so far, and he's pretty good. So. Uh, Anyhow, they're having fun with it. Uh, they don't have. It's just something they stay have fun. It's not like they have to. Whoever shows up, they do a tournament, and but it's going well. That's nice. So and he's volunteering his time to stay with the kids. So uh, the team teaching. Uh, well, Mr. Vega already talked about it. They really give him So uh, they're doing that, and uh, yeah, just uh, I don't think E-Blast went out uh, what the other day, maybe Monday or Tuesday, I think. Well, it went out last Friday. I think then we did a correction okay. on the girls game Monday, I think. Uh, and then, uh, that's it. That's it for here for public. Sounds good. Just, just a couple things. He uh, mentioned deficit spending. We're not deficit spending. He was twitching. And we're triggering something there before. We, we actually got down a little bit. For next John. Year. I told you that. 
fingers going down, so just to clarify. <laughs> we're watching it, but he's doing a good job. Um, just a couple things on page four. That records commission meeting. Maybe you can be here a half hour. Sure. The next meeting yeah, is we just go over the, the informal neck that we have to get rid of records and and it would be right in, in case uh, we have a special one, it would just be the regular month. But, you know, next month. Oh okay, okay. Not, right, it'd be the regular one before the regular okay. <laughs> um, so that's what that's for. Um, does everybody understand what the tax rates are? What's that? The tax rates. Fifty one or okay. the, the on page five item now. The resolution accepting the tax rates. Those come from the county auditor in Ralph's office. And those rates are what determines what local taxpayers and businesses pay for tax rates, the effective rates. Our total is like forty six, right? Are we forty something? Um, well there's there's inside millage and there's effective the millage. Out. Yeah, it's thirty. No, I read it just because that's actually a positive thing in my opinion. Yeah, I was just thinking the taxes yeah. and for the school rate, we actually have one of the lowest. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm bringing it up. So, so the TV man can hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just protocol. The board every year at the same time we approve the rates. It's kind of like approve what they approve. And um, on on item I, we're we're going to buy a new, one new bus after July. That was actually oh, okay. And that was kind of a surprise. Yeah. Because usually we get a little bit more of a notice that we need a new bus. Mm. I don't remember hearing. I know it's been several years since we've bought a new bus. Yeah. Probably almost four. You actually put her off last year. I think we were going to buy one. Mm -hmm. Not you guys, but we kind of like. Perfect. Yeah. It was kind of a surprise when I saw that. Try to stay ahead. Of I didn't know it was far out. I was going to ask too. I thought maybe something happened. Or well, maybe it's a retreat. You're thinking I'm not going to I don't remember uh, it even being brought up that we needed a new bus. No, I mean, she had, I mean, we've had, John's had a budget, I think, in the forecast for one. Yeah, yeah we were showing, you know, each year almost like one, two of them, but we've been making them. We, I mean, we could have one come next month. I mean, this is on here. Oh, this no, is just that, go through I'm not process. questioning the fact that we need one. I just, yeah. it just came up all of the time. No, I'm good. I just want to ask I'm sure there's wear and tear. We didn't go over in the retreat. But the year prior, we went over yeah, exactly how many buses we have, what year they were. Yeah. We didn't do that this year. Yeah, it was just like a surprise when I saw them. A new bus. That's a lot of money. He was trying to slide it by. It. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I didn't have that much money, so. <laughs> and I hear the bus drivers are all sick. Yeah. There's three out. That's yeah. terrible. Well, we just got one back, so there's two out. How are we managing with all of that? We've got our subs back, too. We're short of subs, too. Really? really? I mean, the one day we got the call very I early like, that... I was going to think it's a snow day. I know. I, know. I, I was like, what is <laughs> but, but they ended up not coming out late. Yeah, it ended up for a pretty good time. time. But I'd rather have parents mm -hmm. be... I think that's good. Than waiting outside. I've been picking one up at a time on my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So are we good, John? Well, anyway, getting back to that real quick. Oh. We joined the House Schools Council. Mm -hmm. They do all the required bidding for us now. So it's very nice. We don't have to go out on our own and go through all that advertising and rejection of bid. Whatever they get, we are So um, just a couple more things. On, like, on page 7, you see like a, uh, the safety meeting on like number nine there. This is a free, this is a cost thing, but we're in what's called a retro program for our workers' comp because we had a few bad times years ago we're still in it. So we have to go to this required two year or two hour training every year. You probably know about that. I go to, I mean, I don't yeah, you go to So we just, we just go to this satisfy that requirement. That's why it's on there. We keep you right there. And, um, and one more thing, House Bill 9, on last month's agenda, every every four years I have to represent a board member, one year, one year, one year of your four terms, to go to the public records training. So I recall last month was on the agenda, I'm a designated person. So I think I got you covered for that, you don't have to worry about it. Um, Just say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> say thank you. <laughs> you don't want to go. Okay. So.
Overwhelming. Legislative report. Okay. I have a hand up. Actually, what I since this is my first legislative report, I got. <laughs> I guess I kind of took it after this since you gave this to us. I mean, there's different different things in the uh, OSBA that they look at, like governance and student uh, achievement, et cetera. But really, I mean, I just had a couple things that I looked at that I'm not by any means an expert on, so I just thought I'd bring it up so everybody's kind of aware of them um, that I feel is important. One was the ECOT thing, which I emailed Kurt, but we didn't get <coughs> one student that was in ECOT, and they're not coming here. So I just didn't know how many there was, if we were going to expect maybe getting several. Yeah, but I know there's all that talk. We only had one student, and they went to a virtual academy. <coughs> I have one. Yeah, she, I mean, one ECOT was in elementary. Yeah. The other th three house bills kind of correlate together one house bill 343 which is the one that requires a school board to pass a resolution approving the complaint or count at a public meeting before filing a property tax complaint so what that means is if we felt that maybe there was a business or something that wasn't we were arguing their tax rate that we have to actually that bill was passed to basically I mean we need to bring it to the public's attention so it could be, it could kind of be like a political thing, I guess. And is that the one that was in rigor and certified mail and all that out, I think? Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a different procedure now, right? Yeah. Actually, we were involved in a couple we 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 We're fighting a couple of those right now. Obviously, the OSBA is opposed to this house. We do want more transparency is with all that process. But. And then the House Bill 31, 371 is the same. Um, it would basically exempt from property tax increased value of unimproved land that has been subdivided for residential development until the construction begins or the land is sold. I don't know how much that's really going to affect us out here, but that's kind of part of all that. And then House Bill 342, which they're trying to eliminate the August special election for any local tax issues. So I don't know if that really would affect us. Or not. I mean, I guess if you weren't planning ahead, it, it could. It's not, it's not going to affect us unless you wanted to put a negotiation on the ballot. But that's not how people right. try to put them on an office. You know, it hasn't treated us very well. I hear them now. <laughs> and this is just a question that I have: House Bill 410, which was the truancy by hours. Do we? How do we track that? I mean, uh, this. Sorry. No, they. Um, Mike, I was going to. The county has actually provided us with some tracking ability through um, our EMIS coordinator, our EMIS sites, and we were able to run reports on a monthly basis that show how many hours the kids have missed. And um, we've also, as we mentioned in another board meeting, we've begun working with Judge Dellick's office for some early warning system um, opportunities where you, if you start seeing a kid that's in you feel like it's in jeopardy, then we we kind of we, we send a letter, Officer Sesnowski or Officer Jay makes a phone call, and then we actually have a representative from Judge Delick's office come in and meet with the kid. You know, there are some steps involved because with, with that bill, they pushed back onto the schools the responsibility of creating a, a team that would work on it. And, and, and it, it's Very difficult to keep track of, but EMIS has provided us with some tools to do that. Well, my first, I mean, I, I figured it's pretty simple to track, not here. Yeah. Right. But so you're signing in and out. Tracking that's why in and out, out, how many hours yeah. you were here or not here, I figured. Yeah, it was just another crazy. I didn't know if we had software, you were doing it on Excel. <laughs> <laughs> or how we were Didn't we? Well, and, and Tony over here, I believe, is either mm -hmm. yours. I mean, she. You know, signs in, signs out, the signs are in there, and then EMIS can run a report by the hours. Um, so you can be like half day excused, partial excused, hour excused. Like it's a lot more on, unfortunately, our secretarial staff to, to do. So they're doing it. A 
interesting bill, I thought, was House Bill 98, which basically said it included skilled trades and institutions of higher education, the opportunity to present information to students and not allow the board to prohibit those presentations. I was sure that, uh, reading more and more into it, it was more like, okay, they have college, you know, they have career day or whatever. I guess that they didn't include skilled trades in that. And I guess some schools were prohibiting them from <laughs> coming to their school. I don't know why you would do that in this day and age, but I just I figured we probably weren't prohibiting anybody from coming and present to our students. So I just thought that was a pretty. I guess some people have that to try to do. I think it's good for me because I'm in the skilled trades. So. And, and I, you know, I work with our guidance counselor here. I've got four graduates working for, you know my company and three of them just graduated you know or two of them just graduated last year and have already went through our full apprenticeship and will be nice. you know they're they're going to be probably making more money this year than <coughs> coming out of a four-year college that with debt and they don't have they're going real well so, yeah. that's good yeah. i thought that i thought that, that was pretty yeah. interesting for me uh, but uh and the last one i have kind of the same thing the you know, the I, I think I have the right bill. House Bill 58, the Ohio Needs Jobs <coughs> Readiness Seal. I don't know. Are we doing that? I mean, so will somebody, um, like, I think it starts this year, maybe? <coughs> will somebody have on their final transcript or report card or whatever it is, or their diploma, that seal showing that they've, they're ready for the yes. work, workforce? More than likely, that student would be a but would be our student. Um, and it goes along the lines of, of the the alternative graduation requirements in which they're doing work keys, they're getting industry credentials, those type of things. So they right. So there's a whole yeah. there's a whole application, I guess you would call it, of I didn't I didn't take it that you had to be in the uh, no, you don't. Sure. No, you don't. But I'm saying we'll do that. So I can't say 100% we're going to have somebody with that. But if they are, they're more than likely going to be at our career center. Uh, so, but I, I guess my question is, how do we try to push that? Oh, we're believe me, we we've looked at a lot of different options. I mean, we had that conversation different. last time. Yes, yeah, so we're yeah. pushing. We're pushing all these kids that come out of school and go to college and you know go get eighty thousand dollars in debt and come out and make twelve bucks an hour. <laughs> You know, if you can't get a job in your field, I'm not saying that happens to everybody, but I mean, it's, it's happening out there. Um, when the trades are just dying. Mm -hmm. So we can push a higher means job readiness seal and they come out and they can get, get some employment. And, not, and they're not, they don't want to go to college. Or? Well, but those students go to the vocational school, so then not you're hurting. Not necessarily. We do, we do have some students that fall on the lines of alternative graduation requirements and even go here. Um, it's such a new thing that we've begun working on some of that process. And I will tell you that one of the things that Mrs. Weary is very good at is, is fitting a kid with what they're going to graduate with. Um, she's not one that would, that would ever push a student into what, like you said, right. a, a college level degree where they're going to be $80,000 in debt if there's another option for that student. She lays a lot of that on the line for them. and. You know, one of those is the the work the work keys or the, the how means jobs seals. I mean, I don't know, you know, what that means to anybody out there. Right? What do they have to do to get that seal? Is there a curriculum that we have to provide? Or is that do on our own? It would be it would be in conjunction with what we do, and it would also be in conjunction with. Um, there's a work keys test that would be Again, like I said, right now, if anyone in our district is going to take advantage of that, they're more than likely going to do that. that doesn't mean in the future that wouldn't be something that would be, they would have an opportunity to do. Are you looking at it? It looks like if you like had a job, I mean, you could, like, you got to have a mentor, I guess, sign off on it, and, or whatever, they maybe they didn't call it a mentor. But I didn't take it that you had to be at, you know, at the, at the technical school. You could be, you could graduate normal, not have any, no, you would just have even have you have to go to college and you have work experience, yeah. and then you have your mentor that signs off that you have all these skills. 
uh, and you've shown them that you have these skills and you've got to have three signatures on it, and if you have that whole application and you can put that on there, then you'll get that ready to seal. I guess my question really is, is are we pushing that and is, are we seeing any results out after somebody graduates? I know it's fairly new, but is it really meaning anything? That's my, is my question. It's, I think it's too early to really determine whether or not it's, it means anything yet. Because the, the importance to me, being, you know, or to any business owner, is right now trying to find labor. Right? No, we're, we're, yeah, we're in I mean, it's at hot halls. I mean, if, they, if you hold a mirror and it pops up, you're like, you're hired. <laughs> you know, and you can pass a drug test. Drug test. Sometimes yeah. maybe you throw that out the window. <laughs> it's crazy out there. You know? It's like, well, what drug is it? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> and you start picking and That's there. terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Does that too. Oh my word. Does that too. I mean, it is. I mean, oh it's reality. I'm not, I'm not, reality. But like when you say someone has to sign it, you know, that's where you have to come into the private career center because you. Not necessarily. No, it, 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 there's a process involved, and it is a new thing that, that's out there. I mean, it, it's it's one of the, the options that's being explored. But I, like I said, I think it's too soon to really see if there has been a benefit to it. And I couldn't tell you right now anyone that we have right now that would have that on the board. I was going to say, I'm imagining like if it was here, maybe not this year, but next year, like the STEM program and that. Could be. If we get this, like the business yeah. center. I think, I think there's an internship involved with it, um, or at least a business connection involved with it. You have to have, you have, to have work experience in that person, and you got, they got to check off on all the different skills you have. But it wasn't anything like out of this world. It was showing up on time. Having verbal communication skills. I thought it was really good um, to look at. So I, maybe I'll print it and bring it back to me or something. But other than that, that's all I got. You know, you brought up like the STEM. Uh, we did have uh, Mr. Schrock and another gentleman here. I forget. I don't remember who it was. They came and uh, they had a banner made. I'm looking at Mr. Schrock yeah. and Lord Jennings. So they had a banner made for 70th anniversary for the VFW or something, right? But anyhow, they were here for like two hours uh, getting a demonstration from like 7.30 to 9.30. Very impressed. I mean, he said he's going to go back and tell all his people about mm -hmm. it. And, uh, the other guy was just amazed that we had that business going inside the building. He didn't know it. And he lives here too. But, um, and Mr. Moore and the kids did a great job with that. I mean, <coughs> just, uh, they actually made his band while he was here. So it was nice. I, uh, just to speak on that, I got a call the other day in the office and I'm it's an outside number. I'm like, hello, this is Mrs. Fisk. Hi, Mrs. Fisk, this is Devin Kristoff coming, calling from Fishbowl Graphics. And I almost chuckled. I mean, he was a completely professional. He went through his pitch and I'm like, Devin? Oh, you know, you hate him, I mean, that's one of your kids. And I'm like, he just impressed me so much. And it was like, you know, hi, this is Devin Kristoff from Fishbowl Graphics. And I'm like, Wait, Devin? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, they are really doing a tremendous job, and I mean, I think both schools are taking advantage of it as well as the outside businesses. They're doing a project for us now. Yeah, and then they did the church for. Yeah, they did for our tournament. Very yeah. much. Mm -hmm. And the Mesa County system, too. Yeah, really good. The kids do a good job in you know, all, all aspects of the business. So, are we ready for roundtable? Do you have anything today, Mr. Campbell? Nothing specific, I guess. I would just uh, think uh, we have. A, I think there's need for follow up on the discussion we had with the athletic director last month, and I don't know if that's on task for next month or if there's any further. I think there's a lot more to discuss there. We'll probably a lot more for us to listen to as far as your suggestions on it. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. Personnel, personnel, personnel. Yep. Copy. That was all I was thinking of. Okay. Mr. Jones. I had that same thought, and I do have one more that goes back to our uh, January meeting when we had the gentleman from the uh, OSBA. OSBA here, and we were talking about the school board mission and the vision, and I didn't really want that to go away, or at least the conversation about it. I did get some from some other schools, so I guess we just need to, you know, are we going to do that like in we want to meet before, we want to do it during, I mean, that's what we got to figure out. We could out. do it with the programs. Well, I don't know if we need a special. Well, we're going to need a meeting to decide what we're going to do about the field and the but lights that, and, yeah. and those sort of things. Can yeah, it be combined with that? 
Is that, 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 that I mean, what, does that mean at a special meeting? We have, or we just reserve or no, no, just whether you want to do it like before a meeting, after, I mean, you gotta, it's still part of the do. board meeting, it's just, we need to plug in the time. We we're talking through the I hour to do it after the meeting. I think meeting. we gotta put a plan together for it, because I don't, I, I personally don't, wouldn't want to put together a mission or a vision for our school district without feedback from the people that I buy into it. So if there's a vision that we have, or I mean, I'd like it to be, I'd like them to be kind of part of it. I don't know if you know what we're talking about or not. But, uh, most, a lot of school boards have a mission. Of, that's what they're here for, and they, you know, it's part of their marching orders, I guess you'd say. So we don't have one. So we thought we all thought it was a good idea to develop one. So it's just a matter of how do we develop it? Who do we get involved? You hit on a key point. Try to get community stakeholders and, and just get conversation. And so that anytime you can get that buy-in and have a conversation, that's a nice trickle-down effect right. from here to the building to community. I don't know if we can put out. A, I hate to say letter. <laughs> <laughs> something you know just asking for feedback and here's what our you know our thought process is we want to be you know we want to I don't, I don't. I mean do you want me to add it to my part next month and we just talk about how we want to go about doing it yeah. and then we're putting it off a whole nother month if we do that well it's hard to get feedback um, we're going to have a tough time with five of us yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is it a school mission statement or is it a school board vision statement? If it's yeah. a school board vision statement, that's us. Right. If it's a school mission statement, that's community. It's school. So, mm -hmm. but I was under the impression during his presentation that it was more of a vision of the school board. What is our five's vision of our responsibility to our <coughs> That's kind of the way I took it. I don't know. I'm not going to exclude the community, but I think, like Tom said, the more people you get involved, the harder it is going to be to put something on paper, I think. I, mean, I, think it, that, I thought that one was ours, but then they should know, and then we can work from there to get a community, a school. And they can yeah, change. I mean, you can change them each four or each year. Or, but I mean, if it's, you just need to, I mean, I think you can do it either way, but if you want it to be a board one, then it'd just be us plugging in the time and board meeting to, to, to work on it. And, Do we want that to be the goal? That sounds like a good goal to have. I mean, no, serious. But have it done by like July. I would say August first is like the new school year, so <coughs> So, Mr. Huff, roundtable. Uh, working with OUPS down here at their new building, I did want to pass on how impressed they were dealing with Mr. Baker, Mr. Rotuna. I'm not sure they talked to either of the principals. I know Tom specifically named both of you. So. I think it was just Mr. Rotuna. So, he, he was impressed. He talked about the STEM program ex extensively. They're the new building down here at the corner. Of Bailey Road and 224. That's uh. We mean 45. No, or Mahoning. Mahoning Field. Mahoning and Bailey. You said 224, so oh, I'm getting confused. Yeah. I'm a okay. little farther north. Right. So, they're the call center for the whole state of Ohio. The 811. If someone's digging underground, you have to call. That's where your call goes now. It's up here in that building, but. They had some of their old uh, monitors that they weren't going to use in the new building, so they offered to donate them here. So they brought those two weeks ago or so. something we can use? Tom, uh, Tom's the head of their IT department, and he was very impressed. Uh, they sh Mr. Rotuna and Mr. Breaker showed them the STEM fishbowl there, and he, he uh, even said they may use, may use them here for some of their printing because they do all kinds of... Uh, literature, you know, whether it's shirts or pens or cups. I mean, I've got all kinds of stuff from them, so maybe a future customer. And 
He told me also any like future technology stuff they might not need, he'll probably end up calling you guys to see if have any use for them. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Very nice, very helpful. So I just want to say pass that on. Good experience here. That's great. That's all I have. Okay. Um, John and I and Todd attended the county board meeting. Um, there were a lot of people there. Um, I'm not sure what their feedback was from the meeting. We really haven't talked extensively about that, but um, we did speak with um, the Western Reserve School Board and they were to send some information our way. I'm not sure if that's arrived. Did you get that, Mr. Baker? Did they send that to you? No. Okay, they didn't. I'll have to recontact them um, about their drug policy. I know we spoke about that several years ago, um, and they were going to send that to the school. So you haven't gotten that since that meeting. I'll uh, follow up with them on that. Okay, I mean, I can just get a hold of them. Yeah, because he had said that they were going to send it our way. Okay. Um, I'll call them. I'll call them. Yeah, I talked to the board, several of the board members and the superintendent, and they were going to send that packet to our school because um, they implemented it just a few years ago, just a random drug testing for students. Um, and the main speaker was about um, drugs. Um, it was a little different message than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be something that we could take back and use in our buildings. Um, it was more statistics than data, which was overwhelming um, with the amount of usages of different types of drugs. So it was a little different information than I was hoping for, but that is why um, I think that's why the three of us attended because we had spoken about that. Um, so I just wanted to mention we did go to that. Um, several of us also went to the North Jackson Citizen Association dinner. Um, I believe it was Kirk, Mitch, and I attended that night. Um, and that's always very nice. This one was extremely long. They had everyone in the community um, come and present, which was very informational, um, I must say. Um, if you've not ever gone to one, I encourage you to go because it, it's very, very interesting. And I think you could get a, a picture of um, Lord Jackson by attending that. Um, a lot of the people that do go are, you know, a different generation than we are, but they have our history. So I think there's value and wisdom with that group. And I always enjoy them. I think they're a great group of people. Um, one thing I didn't see on here at all was the music, um, the music department. Our music department competed the first Saturday in February. And my mind is not placing the letters. It's like, it's not N-E-O-E-A or it's something because as you hear, I'm a little bit cloudy today. Um, but I don't see that on any of this information. And we had, um, we had five high schoolers attend. Jacob Klein um, went as a saxophone solo and he received state ranking of one, which is the best you can get. Um, Gia is a sophomore, and forgive me for not knowing your last name, Gia. I just, it's our quill. Okay, there you go. I just call her Gia, um, and she did a clarinet, no, she did an oboe solo, not clarinet, and she also received a one. Um, Charlotte Liggett did a vocal solo, and she got a two. Uh, my daughter, Corey, did one and got a one. And Leona Stout also competed and received it too, vocally. Um, I'm kind of sad that it wasn't here, and I'm equally as sad that it wasn't on the, the sign. Um, and I, I'm not sure if that's because um, that wasn't like written down by someone. Yeah, that just was something we missed, but we'll make sure we really okay. that. And in addition to that, Mr. Vega, if you wouldn't mind acknowledging the high school cheerleaders. Um, I had some upset parents because they weren't announced even on the announcements, and I don't know how that works if if the coach has to like write an announcement or something. You know, a lot of times I do what I what I base a lot of my announcements are what I get from them, but that is something that I do have on for this this week's. Okay. It's just I didn't get it in time to gotcha. broadcast. I normally put this broadcast. Yeah, and I know you would never miss a student. Please understand. I I, I never, know you. I would you never would miss never. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a hard-working group of girls. Was one of them. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. And I'm very proud of them to get that state. And I don't think we've ever had that in our school. No, that's the first time. So I'm very proud of them. I think that's amazing. Um, and then everything else was executive for me. So. so. You mentioned sign up front. Yeah. yeah. No, like some red line. We'll get that. It's under warranty to get that. Yeah, you know what? It's like at the end. But I thought maybe the ladies did that like for our attention. Uh, <laughs> that's that's right. inside, so we did something five minutes in case you guys noticed that, that we were all on it. So. <coughs> Good. Anything else round table or can we go on to public right, presentation? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anyone have anything for public presentation today? I would like to say thank you, Mr. Baker, your um, correction that you sent out on the, uh, the call the last email left. I noticed uh, my suggestion was to let the parents know that the survey results were read and discussion, just so they know they're not taking those surveys for nothing. So I thought that was nice of you to acknowledge that. Um, I also had an issue, um, like a safety issue with, with junior high basketball, and, and that was addressed in um, the rest of the season went very well, so I just wanted to thank you as a board and a leadership group for kind of listening to the people and uh, taking steps to address that. Thank you. We can go on to letter L, adoption of consent calendar. Um, you want to go to the executive first? Do we, or can we, can we adopt it and we, vote? We can, if we wanted to do something. Oh, so can like that. Yeah. We'll just get rid of the calendar now. Okay, so option the consent calendar. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Jones. Second by Mr. Hoff. Mrs. Pittman? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Hoff? Yes. On page 10. Do you want to go to the executive? Yes. For employment of personnel pursuant to ORC 121.22 G1. Motion. Second. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Pittman? Yes. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. And Mr. Hoffman? Yes. I raise are we going to go to a different room? Or are you? I got to go check. I don't know. 